Hi, good evening. Uh, good morning, everybody. This is uh, Deepak from VW. Welcome to yet another uh, webinar from VW. <clears throat> so today we're going to talk about how to run effective optimization programs. Um, today, along with me, I have two special guests uh, from Multiplica, uh, Jan Marks and uh, David Otero. Hi, everybody. Jan, you're wearing a mask. Uh, I think uh, video distancing is 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 a, is a new normal now. Well, actually, I had to travel today. I'm reporting. I'm calling in from an airport, and if you could see it around, okay. I'm kind of surrounded for, by by some watchmen who just wait for me to take the mask off so that I could have to pay a ticket. So I I uh, I'm sorry, but I have to wear a mask today. Right, right. No issues. Uh, you know, it's it's better to be safe uh, than to be sorry. Yeah. Uh, hi, David. How are you doing today? Hi, Deepak. I'm doing all right. I'm not wearing my, a mask, thankfully, because I'm at <laughs> home, so I have that going for me. <laughs> okay. Right. So, uh, you know, let's get started. Uh, we have about uh, a few people joining in. So, Jan, you, you can start presenting the screen and I'll introduce the topic. Okay, all right, yeah. Uh, hello again, everybody. Let me just put my camera off because it's probably better. So, this way. Um, welcome. Uh, we had the idea the other day when we noticed from many conversations that cost efficiency in situations in, um, of, of uh, limited, more limited budgets is a very important subject for many of us. So uh, we wanted to share with you a couple of things that are related to this very subject. Uh, as you, let me just go jump, jump right into that. Uh, well, with us is my colleague, David Otero. Uh, he is in charge for growth and innovation at Multiplica. Hi, David. Hi, guys. All right, great. Okay, let's jump right into it. So we talk about four different subjects, actually, too, which all relate to how to run conversion rate optimization with limited resources. The first one is effectiveness, doing the right things, testing the right things. The second one is uh, efficiency. It is optimizing with a lean and agile process. And the third one is to stay flexible. How can you avoid fixed costs? And the fourth one is uh, actually, well, uh, Deepak will know uh, to explain it much better than I do. What is a great affordable uh, technology for conversion rate optimization? Uh, who is Multiplica? Just to introduce us a little bit, uh, our company was born 20 years ago. We are around 300 uh, digital artisans or experts, and uh, we've served around 750 clients with more than 3,000 projects. We uh, are uh, strongly for comparing us to other agencies, we are really strongly uh, concentrated on creating high converting user experiences. That's our uh, core business. And if you talk to our customers, what they say, so we're, we're getting things done. So we are a service provider who operates uh, many conversion rate optimization programs. These are a couple of the brands that some of them you might know from a lot of well known travel brands and insurance companies and uh, retailers and uh, you name it. There's a whole mm -hmm. bunch of that, both larger companies and smaller ones. Um, yeah, Deepak, three words to VWO. Absolutely, so uh, I'm pretty sure most of, uh, most of the attendees will know about us. We are one of the leading uh, A-B testing solutions and optimization platforms, well, very well connected. The biggest differentiator is that we provide all the optimization tools under the one hood um we serve companies like ubisoft norvian in the business for 10 years and one of the the most affordable technologies out there <laughs> we'll talk more about this in the next slides okay great um well let's uh, jump right into it david um, please tell us more about effect, uh, effective prioritization uh, of experiments yes, mm -hmm. yes. so as, as we were saying, we want to run a cost-effective cost program, but we need to 
we need to prioritize effectively. And to do that, we need to look at data. Data, data is key. Yeah, and in this day and age, we, we all have access to a Google Analytics account or there are other free tools that allow us to understand what our users are doing. And that is uh, basic to focus our effort. Also, <laughs> perfect. Okay, then we also need to go, we can go deeper. Uh, so we have uh, analytics to understand what the user is doing, where are we gonna have more impact, and then we can predict where to do. And then we can also combine that with user research techniques to understand what the users, and um, give the user a voice, or understand what are the pain points that they are suffering. So with these two combined settings, we can understand what are the parts of our website that we need to optimize the most. Then we have the journey. Users are different from when they start uh, coming to our website to when they finish buying. And they have uh, what we call the user journey when they discover about us. Uh, and during these uh, different phases, they go through different uh, experiences, pain points and whatnot. So we need to really understand at one point, at what point each user is to effectively attack or improve that uh, user's experience so we can detect the opportunities. Right, uh, uh, thank you, David. Uh, one thing that I wanted to sure. point out, because when we're talking about data sources, uh, one of my favorite uh, tool cases is, is actually a package uh, that's called VW Insights, which is less known than VW Testing, at least uh, what, what, what I uh, noticed in the market, and it's a, range of beautiful tools. Uh, Deepak, what is uh, VWO Insights? VWO Insights is a one of its kind uh, a user behavior analytics platform, I'd say. It is a combination of five products in total. It's session recordings, heat maps, form analysis, surveys, and the ability to track your goals and funnels as well. So all in all, one particular suite where you can collect data for all the metrics for your visitors and it then it converts it all the observations that convert it into hypothesis and it's a ready set of data which you can use to craft up a very good strategy to create uh, your testing so one of the uh, very well-known packages up in the market uh, there's more information that you can check out on the website that's vw.com Uh, thanks, Deepak. Uh, I, I think wrapping up things, um, uh, David, you, you said um, uh, data is important. And from your experience in, in having run many projects, uh, is, is, do you often notice that people just jump into uh, uh, optimization without having had a deep look into its data? And, and how important really is it to look, go, go a little bit deeper? Uh, than just looking uh, in, on a couple of pages in, in Google Analytics from your personal point of view. Yeah, so sometimes, yeah. yes, uh -huh. people just go with the password, which is, right, uh, CRO, com optimize, and then they just go for it. Uh, and obviously, as I was mentioning today, everyone has access to some kind of data, so they look at maybe what are the most, uh, the, the pages with the highest abandonment rate and whatnot. Uh, but Absolutely, what we were seeing on the on the previous slide with all the solutions that BW offers, that gives you a much more in-depth uh, insight of what's happening on the website because we can detect that a specific page is uh, getting a lot of abandonment or uh, or the, the 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 clicks are going to where we don't want them. And with using a heat map, for example, we can understand how that users or how most of the users are inter interfering interacting with the site or even session recording that is amazing because you can see one-on-one -on -one what each user is is doing on your site so absolutely this is very very important i think some people in the audience might wonder okay uh, our headline of, of 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 today's webinar of today's meeting here is uh, how to run cost efficient uh, optimization programs i'd like to point out again um, this, what we just uh, uh, summarized, is, is all about testing the right things. So if you do not fully understand what the user is feeling, why he is dropping, why he is bouncing, uh, and, and where he is bouncing, you might be testing things that you've seen that you think is extremely important 
But at the end, it turns out if you had tested some other stuff, your lift in conversion rate and revenues would have been much higher. So in other words, testing the right things is uh, mandatory to make sure that your limited resources go into the, these experiments that are the most important ones and most promising ones. Let me jump to um, the second criteria. So let's assume for a second that we've, we've looked into data, we have found some really important things. Um, the second uh, challenge is to set up a lean and agile optimization process. When we um, start collaborating with uh, any brand in, in conversion rate optimization, um, we always point out how important it is to have a proper organization in place, have a proper process in place, a well-defined workflow that it, it enables the company to actually launch and run an optimization program without a huge budget. Um, uh, I uh, Let me explain when I talk about the workflow, what is the workflow we are working in. Um, that's a well-known agile process of conversion rate optimization. It's also the process we are following. We start with analysis, as we said, we then have our strategies, create some ideas. Uh, we then evaluate the feasibility and uh, character of these uh, ideas. And then we, together with the client, we prioritize and decide what's to be done next. Our UX people create some mock-ups. The customer approves it or the product owner uh, approves it. Uh, then the designers uh, uh, do the high level, uh, um, the, the uh, high resolution design. Another approval, developers start coding. Once they're done, quality assurance, make sure it looks good everywhere. Uh, we set the right audience and target groups. We, and the last validation, then we launch and monitor. So that is actually the process. It's quite obvious that it makes sense to, to run one experiment after another in this particular workflow. So what are the best ways to uh, waste your time and money? or what are the best ways to avoid wasting. So a sure bet to waste money and to waste time in your program is to set up too many meetings. That are, we've, I've seen this so frequently that I really wanted to point it out how important it is to reduce the number of meetings and also to reduce the number of participants in a meeting. Stick to ownership um, of particular tasks and roles. So it's not, teamwork that does not mean that we always have to to sit together and decide everything together and so on. So that's one, one pretty easy step to save a lot of money. The second one is be specific in your briefings to avoid unwanted loops and unplanned iterations. So for instance, if the designer just gets a briefing of, well, let's put a dark blue uh, banner at the top of the page, uh, then it's it's always almost certain that he's going to have a couple of iterations until it's really understood what was meant by that. So the the briefing as such and, and the level of detail that is given is really helpful to avoid this because these loops can be pretty expensive and they can happen on the UX level, on the design level, and so on. That's the next important one. Another one is you, uh, you, in your conversion rate optimization efforts, you depend very often on people who are not aware that if they do not deliver certain things in time, that everything is on hold. And that is also pretty expensive. And uh, a good example is if you have set up a beautiful experiment, everything's done, it's agreed that your product owner loves it, and so on. And then you have someone who's in charge for the content database, and he is it's, it's taking weeks until you find some suitable photos and imageries that you need for a particular design. And everything's on hold then. And this can, can happen in many times. What is the solution? You need to get the buy-in and the commitment from all departments that actually contribute to this optimization process. They need to be part of it. If you, have, if you leave people outside, uh, outside the program. They do not understand the program and its importance. And then at a certain point, you are asking for certain input from them. You will see that most probably it takes some time to actually get what you need to proceed. That's another important point. And the last one that I wanted to point out is I want to encourage you uh, to have a deeper look into your test results and eventually refocus. 
Uh, we said this yesterday. It's a, it's a good example is you have created a wonderful idea. You worked a lot for it and you were expecting a, a, a higher lift in conversion rate and sales. Now you, you, you have monitored the experiment and unfortunately, surprise, the lift is not as big as you hoped. So there are two things you can do. One thing is that you write off all the efforts that you've made before and just continue with the next idea you have or you have a deep look into it and eventually find out that for instance in the german sp speaking markets this experiment worked like hell and created a seven percent increase in conversion rates and on the british market eventually it has decreased by six percent so uh what's the point it's users are different marking uh, people are surfing differently and uh, uh eventually with a simple refocus change of the audience you can iterate this experience and without having to invest again from the very beginning you make make uh, uh, create a very positive impact on this do not give up too early on experiments which did not deliver the results that you had expected analyze and refocus so these are just four four things um, that are really important when you run the program days and if you do not take care about them you will see that both internal resources and eventually external resources will waste a lot of time and money. And the third point is, um, how can you make sure that you that you stay flexible? And uh, let's have a look what 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 you need to run this program. Actually, you uh, will need a, a, a set of these skills. You need somebody who runs the overall program, so you call it project manager or conversion rate officer or whatever and you have a data analyst who takes care who joins this process you have strategists who understand the market the environment and come up with a lot of best practices etc then you have people who understand ux ui you have some coders developers people who make sure that code works everywhere and you have a content manager so you need these skills and uh, the dilemma actually is that if you want to have it run a scalable optimization program, you're going to see look into something like a time like like this. You start slowly, then you have more, then you have less again, more again, and eventually more and more. So your team needs to stay flexible. You need to find ways, and of course, one of the ways is that you collaborate with a, a service provider, an agency, or you find other help for the peaks of your uh, uh experimentation work so uh, it, it it needs to be otherwise you will not be able to scale up your optimization efforts and i think uh deepak will also uh, refer to that i think uh, the, the common goal needs to be that when budget is tight um you, you might want to start small but you also need the capacity to uh, uh operate the peaks and and, and use resources that are uh, creating variable but not fixed costs. So when you are working in optimization with an agency, and uh, uh, it, it, whether it's us or anybody else, it's really important to have a chat with your agency about this flexibility. So really make sure that if it's difficult for you, then you will have a, a very flexible model with them. Or if you have a more strategic plan, then you should uh, discuss a, a set of conditions that they can provide variable resources to uh, uh, your optimization program. So that, that would be definitely the, a really important uh, thing that needs to be planned from the very beginning. And the most beautiful subject of today, of course, is uh, how to choose the technology. Let's, let's talk about optimization technology for a second and, and, and Deepak, you, um, I was told you know a bit about that. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thanks for the kind words, Jan. So, yeah, we talk about how do we choose affordable technology in case for So the main tools and softwares out there, um, you know, I'll, I'll start with uh, where I left off while we talking about the BW Insights. When we look at the free tools, you see that the first importance that are given to is to the tools or the software that help us to collect data like mixed panel, kiss matrix, sieve, and amplitude. Given a lot of importance to collecting data because we need to be running data-driven campaigns. 
It, it's an industry fact that only one out of eight experiments or A-B test campaigns yielded a positive result or are successful. That means we need to sweat a lot while collecting a lot of data. Hence, we need the tools that give us the right kind of data. There are many magnificent tools out there, like Mixed Panel Kiss Matrix. And in fact, VW is in talks with Mixed Panel to build a very tight integration that would help uh, both the customers on each of the sites to reap the benefits of this integration. Google Optimize. I think there are, there, there are a couple of opinions out there in the market that, you know, is Google Optimize good enough for scaling purposes? I, I'd say no, uh, because it's difficult to use a difficult technology. But on the other side, I'd like to credit Google uh, as a company for educating and bringing awareness to the market by providing a free product. So it really handed over this product across millions of people across different markets so that they can play around and get the exposure to the much needed optimization technology. Optimize the rollouts. I think the smaller product companies, which were finding it very difficult uh, to manage their products online and they did not have uh, access to expensive technologies, uh, Optimize did a great job by offering it the free rollout feature that allowed a lot of product, product marketers uh, to test out their products in different volumes. Affordable tools, I'd say Crazy Egg and Hard Jar tops the list. I think they have been around for, I don't know, since time immemorial. And it has become a, a pseudo. If you have a website, you, you, you tag it with GA and you put uh, Hard Jar or Crazy Egg to, manage, to monitor user behavior. Great piece of technology to use there. SurveyMonkey, a dark space organization, and uh, they do a great job in helping a lot of people to collect feedback. User testing, usability testing, I think this was one of the initial companies who started providing session recordings. Last but not the least, we got the all-in-one platform of VW Insights and testing, a really powerful combination. So you got the analysis part, you got the user behavior part, you're covered with insights, you create observation hypothesis, that's a VW plan layer that's inbuilt with, with both the products, and then you convert the entire program into a testing program and you have the product protocol testing for that. And you'd be surprised that you know, all of this comes in, in in less than $500 a month. So quite affordable, very powerful. And I think uh, Christine, uh, the CEO of Multiplica and me were discussing this yesterday and we had two opinions. Uh, one of them was, you know, is free really free? You know, I think my opinion is, Although it is uh, a bit time consuming, but still, you know, it, it's worth investing and in getting started because it's risk free. You don't have, a, you're not putting any investment. You, you can look at the free tools uh, as source of educating yourself. You know, you can spend like a couple of weeks with uh, Google Optimize just to see how things work out and then you can eventually move to an affordable technology like Vida Player. On the other side, I think the scale up is important. We'll, we can move to the next slide again. Right. So what are the factors we consider when we're looking at uh, affordable or free technologies? So we just need not to uh, look at the cost of the software. We need to start including the cost of design, development, operations, and the different teams involved. So with the free software, uh, the design effort and specifically the development effort goes pretty high. So while you're creating a campaign in uh, Google Optimize, it, the technology is free, but the man hours that goes into creating the campaign could be like five to six hours. And the same kind of campaign could be created in VW in less than about 30 minutes. So you can equate the man hour cost and you'll figure out that Google Optimize is not really free when you're trying to scale up these things. Flexibility, we should be able to easily make changes on the go without running a dev every time. Now, this happens with a lot of free technologies that you know the setup is difficult, the UI is broken, and we need some technology expert to help us to to help us get off the ground. With paid tools or like affordable technologies like VW, everything is nicely set up, the UI is easy, the support is there. So you can get started by setting up a few funnels, the session recording uh, views, heat mapping views, et cetera. And you can have the VW editor at your disposable, disposable to start creating some very nice and crafty campaigns. Support becomes very inherent. So with Google Optimize, the trouble is that if you get stuck, you only have the Google community to support you. And this could become really tricky and it could demotivate you. 
to make any further progress. So that becomes the support, the product support that BW provides is pretty, pretty much top notch. Uh, we do not differentiate really between, you know, different kinds of plans that we have. We, we just look at providing the great support to ensure that uh, the customers uh, get success. Services, and now I'd say when you're looking to scale up your optimization program, it's always advisable that you get an expert on the team who has done this for a number of years. The, the key advantage they bring to the table is they help you to do the zero to one journey fairly quickly. They avoid the pitfalls. They let you know what kind of mistakes that you could probably avoid and it just provides you the much necessary velocity that you need to be in the optimization stratosphere. So, you know, talk to Multiplica guys and see what they can do to help you off the ground. Let's move to the last slide. Next one. The benefits uh, of uh, having, considering those factors, as I mentioned, it gives you the velocity. Moving at speed is okay, but velocity shows you the direction. So, Adapt quickly, we learn immediately, and we fail and win it fast. So the concept over here is you give yourself, let's say a couple of weeks, you play around with the free tool platform. You just get accustomed to the process, how the things work, and you get the mentality. Once you're ready to take the high road, you start playing with a, uh, you know, a paid platform. Things become easier. And then when you're ready to take off, you get an expert on the team who helps you to do this journey fairly quickly because now the expert in you are going to talk in the same language. You have done the learning. You have prepared yourself for the optimization journey. You get one single platform to manage it all. BWO is just not about insights and testing. It's about uh, server-side testing. It's about mobile app testing. So under the hood of BWO, you get seven different products, which is considerably the maximum amount of software that you'd ever need to optimize various channels. The leadership is really happy. That's the eventual goal. You know, a lot of end users, end marketers have asked me the question, you know, everything looks pretty neat. Where do I go to get a substantial report? How do I make my managers and the management really happy? Details, a very, very detail-oriented reporting mechanism is a key aspect of BW. By just by a couple of click of buttons, you get such a detailed report that you can easily compile and send across to the management explaining your hypothesis, the reason for the testing, what did it all test, and how does the final results look like with the comparison between uh, the control and the variation. Definitely Multiplica would come into the picture to sharpen up and, and to ease off that journey as well. So for better and for more information, you, you can submit a query at bw.com. We'd be more than happy to give you a free tour of the platform. All right. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Deepak. Um, really, really friendly words. Thank you very much, Deepak. I uh, uh, I really appreciate that. Uh, and um, I would like to ask David. Uh, David, well, Deepak has mentioned you now in, in different angles uh, comparing uh, uh, Google Optimize and BWO. We've been in this situation. So we've seen customers who wanted to start, and then it was the question: Should they start with Google Optimize or should they? take a, a, a more complete solution and so on. what was your experience with 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 this scenario and what what was what is our recommendation when this happens so as as he was mentioning uh sometimes free uh is not good enough and um, google optimize it's a uh, it's a tooling world uh, google learned something and tried to impress the world as they did with google analytics and from our point of view, or more uh, with the experience of running uh, successful optimization programs, Google Optimize is just a tool uh, to play with, but not to run a successful program. It lacks so many things that will be like roadblocks in your in your success. Uh, I I mean, it's free but you you will pay with your time it's gonna be a lot of problems you lack the support uh you lack the documentation so it's just a trial and error and on the other side also if they want to change something one day they just change it and you're not important to them you are just another number another free user so uh, if you want to play around to see what cro is about do it play with it but if you want to start making 
uh, a serious CRO program, I would say you will need to invest in order to, to be safe and play with, uh, with some security. I don't know if that answers your question. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, it does actually. It's uh, I, I, and I agree. In the, the the situations that I've seen was that actually um, there were always some some real downsides. Like uh, when in the course of a, of an experiment, uh, you needed to change something, you needed to correct something, and so on. That you had to go back to square one and you know to ramp up everything again, and uh, uh, you lost a lot of time again. So I remember two years ago, you and I were in a project where this happened all the time. And and we we both wish that we could uh, migrate the project to a more professional tool as quickly as 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 possible. Another thing I I said, uh, saw at a large German tour operator um, the other day is which is the uh, the limited number of concurrent uh, uh, experiments. So a lot of companies I think uh, are using VWO to as 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 a um, workaround uh, and bypass of uh, uh, IT. Lacking IT, uh, 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 IT resources. Uh, clearly, um, this two operator, they they were running 65 experiments at the same time, and and 45 of them were clear winners, and they were actually uh, not implemented because there was such a long queue for, on the IT side. So what did they what they do did was just uh, give 100% of the traffic on the variant that which they had created within uh, VWO, and that's really important. That is important because most companies. Uh, or many companies, they uh, they just do not have this this all time available IT resources. They work from release to release, and in the meantime, you cannot deploy the improvements that you have seen in your testing. And I think uh, actually BWO created a specific tool for that uh, for this for this implementation purpose, Deepak. Absolutely, from uh, an implementation point of view as well. Um, a lot of lot of concerns have been raised. Um, I think the reason that we I'll talk a, a bit of the story here. So you know, I was speaking to an expert in the marketing team who said that you know, you know what, I, I'm able to run some great campaigns. Uh, why the editor? The only trouble that comes is when I need dev support, and the biggest trouble that comes is that uh, once once I have a winning campaign, I have to go ahead and submit a request, and the request needs to go through. And approved and then an engineer would pick up and deploy the winning campaign or implement it we heard that problem we created a product out of it we call that as vw deploy now by just a simple click of a button you can implement you can deploy the winning variation directly to the 100 percent audience and you can maximize and uh, maximize your profits so you're skipping that step and you are you know and you can show the roi to the organization and to your leaders so VW has been one of those organizations where we hear uh, our customers' concerns and problems and we go ahead and solve various problems. When it comes to the implementation part, we have tried to put in so many things into the editor. But at the end, I'd say this, Jan, you know, the product can do uh, to a certain extent and, and we, we're doing really great at it. But when it comes to the implementations, you really need to have good ideas um, and that can come from experience. So more and more testing, uh would yield good results great thank you um yeah i don't know if we have had uh, the chance to encourage our audience to come up with some questions i'd love to know a bit um, uh, more about who's listening in so if you uh feel free to share in which industry you're working and if you have some experience with conversion rate op optimization or uh, uh, are you starting right now or and is there any burning question so now's the time you know, there is a button where you can put this uh, your questions uh, Deepak did you do we already see something coming in uh, uh, as of now we don't see uh, any questions but I will urge uh, uh, the attendees to you know make the best use of the time and the experts and the, and the panelists uh, to, to clarify any thoughts any any questions, any anecdotes that you'd like to share with us? So something that I wanted to mention since we are talking about costs here, uh, that sometimes by trying to actually cut costs, you will maybe incur in additional costs. So a couple of things that I think are important and maybe are not, people don't, do not think about them is, uh, 
QA and analytics. So QA is really important uh, because otherwise you will need to to redo things once they're live and whatnot. So spending the QA time before launching a CRO experiment, I think it's key. Uh, and it's a step that sometimes goes just by and we don't do it. So that's one of the things I will take into account. And the other is uh, the analyst or somebody that takes the role of analyst and to, to actually analyze what's going on. As Jan was mentioning earlier, sometimes you see a losing test, but if you look deep into it, it's not losing for everyone. And then it's when segmentation comes into play. So maybe German users, visitors, are more prone to react positively to a specific experiment, or I don't know, uh, we have different segments that we can play with. So spending some time or money on an analyst or somebody that can actually review the data, it pays off and, and it's a nice way of avoid losing money. Just wanted to mention. And, uh, 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 I saw one thing, sorry, Deepak, uh, uh, one question coming up that, that uh, uh, you mentioned playing around for, for a while can be okay. I think, um, uh, and I also saw that in a couple of projects, is BWO is the, one of the very few ones that actually offer a trial. Uh, I never understood this. Uh, well, maybe you have spoken to your beloved competitors, but um, mm -hmm. I, I always I, I have seen how uh, uh, that this makes a huge impact for people who don't know this subject. So um, that that's still the case. Is that true? That's absolutely true. That's absolutely true. Like you know, I've spoken to so many other partners and customers as well. So many anecdotal experiences that they have always felt that the cost of running a campaign uh, with the three tools is pretty high and then uh, they have to really convince the people so it takes a bit of time for for different people for different agencies to convince the customers as to uh, why you should wait a bit longer for the campaigns to run uh, if the campaigns if the campaigns did, if the variation did not win it doesn't really mean that it was a failed campaign because you still learned out of it there have been various experiences as well I think we have a question around. Um, I've seen the implementation yeah, bottleneck in many companies. Okay. Uh, another one. What percentage of experiments are inherent wins versus failures? How many times are we proven wrong when we make hypotheses? Are these failures? Are these failures a loss? David, you want to answer that? I mean, probably no. I, I would say yes. That they are no. Will you agree, Jan? Well, I, I think. I, I, uh, uh, well, I think I'm go now. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. Well, first of all, we all love. We prefer winners, right? Um, to give a better idea, uh, what what I've seen is um, in projects we've been involved in, around seventy to ninety percent are winners. Is that correct, more or less? That is my uh, last mm -hmm. number that I have seen. Um, uh, uh, it, 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 I mean, once that we've seen, that's what I mentioned before, that, that, that the, the hypothesis was not true. Well, first of all, you save uh, on implementing wrong stuff. You know, if you would not have tested it, you would have implemented it, you've wasted uh, ex, ex, things, added code to your page, and it wouldn't have uh, delivered a result. That's one thing. The other thing is that you learn from every experiment, whatever the result is, you learn for the next ones. The, the example that I gave you earlier. So you see that, that, for instance, markets are acting completely differently. I would say a loser is not a loser, it's not a loss. It's a learning, it's um, learning. As long as, you, as long as you analyze the why, and that is also why, why I love it so much that you have this integrated um, insights package with VWO that, that, uh, that I haven't seen in, in other tools uh, that you can quite easily switch into observation mode and analyze deeper why A or B was the winner of this particular experiment. And what was, and you can, you can even talk to the user. So you can first look at the, his, the, the heat maps, you can first look at some sessions 
And if that's not enough, then you can just uh, create an online survey and ask some customers of some who have done certain things. And you can talk to them and say, why did you leave at this step? And you can say, was it A, B or C? And after a couple of days, you have 120 people giving you a good answer. So I think if this is learning, I think it, 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 it can be learning as long as you analyze afterwards. Uh, but of course, uh, if you do a proper prioritization and you, you, you create your ideas based on data, then the probability of having lots of losers uh, in your experiments is, is much lower, of course. Great. A very interesting question coming up, uh, Jan. Uh, thoughts on how to deal, deal with a VP? We, we have two VPs on the call. Who gets two in the in uh, who gets two in the weeds on approving test creative for every effort, slowing down program velocity. VP gets in the weeds on everything, not just this. So getting the approval from the stakeholders. Well, uh, <laughs> yeah, good point. Uh, well, we've seen that. We've seen that. I think it can be to a certain extent. I mean, the sea level can be complicated. Uh, that's uh, for sure. And uh, but I think uh, it depends very much on the cases. You can, if you have the support of somebody in the board, and you have the buy-in of the related uh, stakeholders from the very beginning, then you're much better prepared. The worst thing you can do is you heard something about conversion rate optimization, and then you then you run a little trial and you put it in a niche and and so on, and until at some point the chief technology officer finds out that you're playing around with the site. So it's, it, you better make sure that you buy, it. once that you have the general idea, once you have you or your agency explains probably the huge potential of testing, then you easily get the buy-in and the general consent from, from uh, uh, managers and senior vice presidents um, to, to, to do these experiments. And, uh, and and have less trouble uh, afterwards. I don't know if this answers the question. I'd say this. My my comments on that is, you know, um, I think the insights as to you know, in order to get the approval, if you have done your research right, if you have the data to back it up, like I want to test this because for the last two weeks I'm observing this. And the number of clicks are going down on the CPH. So we got to change the color, the button, the location, and we got to change, we got to do something about it. That's what the data says. Now, if the person is is, is getting too weedy about it, he's really defying the logic. It's his, he, the numbers can't be wrong. So the only way to deal with the C suite, what I've learned is data, data, and data, and more data. Yeah, facts. And then you exactly. need a platform. Yeah. And you yeah. need a platform that gives you the data in the easiest possible format. So but that's my answer to the question. Yeah, switching from I think to I know. I know that we have a problem and we need to fix it. So data is there. Although I have seen CEOs and CMOs who have seen the data and the answer was, I don't care. I don't want this. I want this color because I like it more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, that's more the exception, I would say. I think data is really, really, really strong. And also, this, this mm -hmm. reaction, one more word on, we are now in, heading into November. We are heading into uh, the time of budgeting for next year. And uh, some of uh, the people in the audience might now prepare to, to defend an optimization program. So here's the answer. If you now run some, some tasks this year and you can show the potential effect of conversion rate optimization, Mostly, uh, your CFO or your your management will approve the budget for conversion rate optimization once it's clear what the real potential is. I think from all the initiatives, uh, for most initiatives, you don't know what will be the outcome, right? You can say, I need 1 million uh, euro for this and these marketing projects, this and these uh, strategy projects, these and these campaigns, and so on. So what will be the ROI? Well, we expect this and that ROI. So it's which, which, which in 90% it's an estimate. But testing is different here. You can run this, you can show this, and you can say, if we do that, you've seen these few experiments that we have run, uh, and, and uh, let's do it and let's scale it up. 
So that, that's, that's also why I like conversion rate optimization. Any more questions in, the, in our chat, Deepak? So, uh, so Don uh, is, is uh, clarifying his question. So his question was more about how we test the hypothesis, not what we test at a high level because of data insight. So I think uh, if I read back uh, Don's question, so how do we test the hypothesis? Like, I think he's talking about, I, th I think Don, what you're referring to is how do we prioritize, uh, how do we decide what to test first and, and what hypothesis gets to uh, be implemented first. Okay, so now the way we do it at Multiplica is we have what we call a prioritization framework in which we use different variables to define the complexity and uh, the, the kind of the return of investment of uh, each experiment. So we take into account how, I mean, if we need to do custom graphics or pictures or we need to write content or we need uh, custom HTML or JavaScript. So all the parameters that can make an experience or an experiment more complex and with that, we get a, a score of uh, complexity, and then we, we rank them based on that. Uh, and that's what we use to, to validate what makes sense. So what are quick wins uh, versus the rest? I, I, in, 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 in addition to the complexity, of course, uh, we look into some other data. So for instance, um, we, uh, I always uh, uh, see two main factors, which is one, well, three. One is the the, the efforts, but uh, size in terms of how many people are, are uh, looking at a particular page. So if you think about the product detail page, which in, in many businesses is is the landing page and receives the the most traffic, but some often more traffic than the home page. Um, so you have a product detail page and you, uh, what we can do as, as an agency actually is we can benchmark certain KPIs against similar figures of other companies. So we, we look into the data of an airline and we see on the, the on a certain uh, destination page, the bounce rate of uh, 47%. Um, and we see on other airlines there is the, that the bounce rate is somewhere between 20 and 30%. So that is obviously, it's a, there's big traffic in it and there is a big gap in performance so that, and if these two things go together this stuff has a high priority because it is a promising higher lift in, in conversion rate whereas if it is more a niche page which very few people see and you don't have a real benchmark on that and uh, well it's it's uh, it's it's uh, you can't talk about a high probability of this is becoming uh, a leader. I try to focus always on things as, well, uh, uh, that, uh, that are, uh, are significantly worse than in other cases that we have seen. And again, that means, as we said at the very beginning uh, of our meeting, it's, it's, it's being data-driven. So it is looking at what are your drop rates, what are your bounce rates, uh, uh, what's actually failing, either in comparison to other similar companies of the same industry or uh, on a timeline. So for instance, now in, in the pandemic, a lot of things have changed. And uh, we, so we have other users who move differently and so on and so far. So what we are actually doing when we start an analysis, we not only try to find benchmarks for other companies, but we look into what exactly is different in 2020 compared to 2029. And then we see the pages which perform significantly worse than before the pandemic. So we see, oh, that is where we need to address something. So because things have changed. So either on, on a, we compare different times or we compare different, different sites actually. And within your own um, uh, range of products, of course, as well, if you have a, you're offering online 200 products, so you look at, uh, your product detail pages of the same category and you find some some pages might show some really uh, 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 worse uh, numbers uh, worse ratios which and that is when th this is the, the way actually we put this into a, a score c scheme so that we can reduce this to numbers and then come up with what is uh, the, the, what is the most promising effect and what is 
the less complexity. Yeah. So I, I think we can we can uh, we can wrap up now and um, uh, and we'd be uh, to everybody like we'd be setting up the presentation to everybody who attended the event. Um, and I would urge you guys and everybody to have a word with uh, David and Jan Marks uh, to consult and to see if they can have, help you in your optimization optimization journey. Any questions that you have, they'd be more than happy. Uh, Jan is pretty, in particular, is a very chatty guy. So you'll hear a lot of stories from him. Uh, he, he, he did not introduce, but I'll just say at the end, like, he, <laughs> uh, he's a German guy, but uh, difficult to identify. So <laughs> uh, David is also very well experienced and well known in the industry. So I, I, I'll quit for now. I hope everybody really enjoyed the session. We'd be more than happy to get a sincere feedback from everybody. I'd like to sincerely thank my trusted partners, David and Jan from Multiplica. Thanks, guys, for, for your time, and I hope uh, everybody enjoyed the session. Thank you, Deepak. Thank you for your time today. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody, okay. for attending. Thanks, Jan. Bye. Bye.